Theo, Joe, congratulations. The strength of your blades has earned you a spot in the final round of our competition. When you came here, you used our forge and our tools and our equipment to forge signature blades in your own style. Now we're sending you back to your home forges where you will recreate an iconic blade from history. Are you ready to see what that weapon is? Absolutely. Yes. That weapon is the Naginata. The Naginata emerged around a thousand years ago in Japan as a powerful pole weapon used by samurai warriors. Featuring a single-edged, slightly curved blade mounted on a wooden shaft, this seven to eight foot weapon was ideal for warding off attacks from enemies on horseback. Because it relied on momentum rather than upper body strength, it was an ideal weapon for female warriors. The Naginata was the weapon of choice for samurai wives defending their homes and was even wielded by Xiong Mi Na video game series Soul Calibur. The traditions of the Naginata continue to be preserved through the teaching of the martial art Adarashi Naginata. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Today is day one. The first step I'm gonna do is draw out our blade design. The process of making this is gonna be outside of my ballpark. I am not a Japanese sword maker. I'm an American knife maker, but we're gonna give it our best shot. We're gonna do a Damascus billet. So we're gonna let this saw blade hopefully do some wonderful things for me. Doing Damascus is, is, is essentially tougher to do um, just because there's a lot of failure points. So in three to 400 layers, that's three to 400 times that I could fail. We're going to turn that into, hopefully, a form today. I'm going to put it in here, heat it up, put some flux on it, and then this thing's going to be glowing. I've never made a Damascus billet or blade uh, this large before. Most stuff I make is about nine inches long, um, and so I have a billet that is going to be drawn to about 40 inches in overall length, which is ridiculous. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a challenge. So the very first thing I have to do, just start cutting the sections that I need. Here, I'm in a forge I'm comfortable with, and if I have more time. This being the first day, I would really love to just go ahead and start tackling forge welding all the pieces of the blade together. I'm gonna do a three-layer laminate. So here I have my core material, and then here's my shell material on the outside. The benefit of the three-layer laminate is that the outside shell absorbs the shock, whereas the hard core or edge material will stay very sharp. I definitely have the advantage over Joe when it comes to this, simply because I've made large blades many times before, and this will be his first. Well, I can see that the outer layer is starting to bow outwards. This is a big piece of metal. I may have bitten off more than I can chew. It's starting to look like the layers are separating from each other. They're expanding at such a great rate that even some of the tack welds may be busted. This is a problem because it means I'm gonna be constantly chasing the material to get it to re-weld to the other steels. It's delaminating already. I have a decision to make. Do I continue to pursue? It's gonna be a headache if I continue down this path. No, I can't. But ultimately, it's gonna to require too much time. I'm gonna to have to strip off the outer shell and just do uh, pure W2. It's gonna be a mono steel blade. I trusted my gut, and my gut lied to me. Today is the morning of day two, and the plan for today is to go ahead and draw the blade out, um, grind it, and heat treat it. So we got a lot of work ahead of us today. Hopefully everything goes according to plan. But it's got a diet. We want to slim fast or grind fast. So I have a blade, which is pretty square. There's a lot of little finishing to do, but it's uh, actually ready for a heat treat. I am scared out of my mind. I have to get down, trying to move some of the equipment, move the propane tank out of the way, because uh, I really don't want to burn the building down. When you change a variable, you get different results. I've never worked uh, with that particular oil before, and we'll heat treat again. I have no regrets in dropping the lamination at all. Today, I need to create an integral guard. 
I'm continuing with a process that I'm familiar with and I know I'll do a good job on. I've decided to go with just a simple low count twist, but it'll give it the additional wrought iron feel that I've been going for. Integral guards are very European in general, but I really think it will work for this piece. It looks nice. Are guards important on a knife? Well, they can be integral. Never done anything with a handle this long, so brand spanking new for me. Ash is historically a very nice, flexible wood. For this, it'll be great because it'll be able to take the shock of hitting something really hard like bone or armor. Oh, yeah. Morning of day four. We're just gonna do a hack test. It's more than sharp enough to hack to a tree. Sweet. Work all right. The plan for today is to trim down the half and then just fit everything together and work on the finishing. This is my piece of ash. It's supposed to be vertical grain. It's a little off-centered, but it's not horrible. Um, I've never really hafted a sword to a long pole. If one little part to the hafting fails, then the whole thing fails. And so there's a lot of little working parts. I'm really interested to see what uh, Theo brings, because I feel like I'm going to give him a, a really good product to compete with. The heat treat went very well. Ultimately, it's about little details. This is Same Manta Ray Skin. It's a traditional wrapping material for handles. That's beautiful. I have no intention of doing any testing on the weapon myself, because the last thing I want to do is push the weapon to its limit and break it. No, thank you. This is a damn good blade. And that's what I came here to do, is to forge a weapon that's going to knock their socks off. The Naginata was a Japanese weapon known for its long-range cutting ability. To see how sharp your Naginata is, I will take your weapon, and I'll attempt to cut through these tatami mats and a side of beef. Theo, you're up first. You ready? Yeah, I think so. Let's do this. Ah, oh, jeez. All right. I'm nervous. The area where the guard meets the tang is a little narrow, which could result in bending, maybe a snapping. I'll take it. Yeah, all right. I just want to point out that after that test, your blade has a slight bend to it. It almost cut all the way through one of the tommy mats. When it came to the side of beef, it cut cleanly through. Your blade feels good. It's got a nice weight to it, a nice balance. Overall, your naginata will cut. Good job. Thank you. Joe, you're up next. You ready? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do it. I feel like Theo did really good in the tatami mat slice and uh, exceptionally well through the beef slice. And I'm pretty nervous at this point on how my blade is going to perform. Nice. Oh, well done, man. Yeah. I would say I'm ahead in the game. Uh, performed a little bit better than what Theo's did. Well, Joe, you have a very sharp blade, but we now have an issue. When I cut through the tatami mat, your handle at the seams here came apart. Your handle seam has opened up. And not only that, it picked up some cracks on this side that runs all the way down here. And on the other side, a hairline fracture that goes down this way. The seams are big enough to where I can actually put my fingernail through them. That is a critical failure. And for purposes of safety, we cannot continue to test your weapon. There's nothing, we can't do nothing. Bladesmiths, the judges have determined that there's no reason to deliberate. Joe, due to the catastrophic failure of your weapon's handle, you may now leave the arena. It's not the way I wanted to win. I wouldn't say I have regrets. I'd say if I could go back and change the, uh, some of the things I did, I would have gone with a different wood, something that was less likely to open up in a crack. I feel like I'm in a round room, and I'm looking for a corner to cry in pretty tough loss.
Theo, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving that $10,000 prize. Good job. You know what I like about your blade? The way you reinforce your handle. Because the power you generate with that saved it. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I am elated to be the Forged and Fire champion. Not the way I wanted to win, but I'll take it. I came here the youngest, smallest person, and I won. For the shortest guy, I certainly came out on top.